The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Old Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. <laughs> She started, Senor Grandpa. Boy, I always got a mouthful. I'm surprised you don't like it, Pepita. Anybody that can eat them tamales ought to be crazy about gasoline. <laughs> uh, Luke, come on, get a move on with that cement, would you? Come on, step lively, boy. We ain't ever gonna get this whole fix. You move slower than a feed worker. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, that sack ain't exactly... Filled with feathers, you know. I am to the whole gas tank. One foot. Well, that ought to be enough to start this here contraption. Grandpa, when you get the hole filled with cement, can I put my footprints in it like the movie stars do? You get that feet of yours to take you on to school. That's why I'll put you to work here. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and, and say, don't you wait to get out of sight and then chase them high heels. I see your footprints are wobbling all over the road out there. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye, Bye Morning, Mr. Perkins. Hello. What you fixing to do, Amos? Well, they're fixing to uh, fix a hole in the road here. That's what we're fixing to do. Yeah. Every time we go over it with a load of eggs, all we got left is shells. Everybody in this part of the valley has had experience with this hole. I hit it so often, I think I'm delivering air mail. <laughs> We'd have fixed it sooner only we had to save up for the fixings. Sure got to compliment you on your public spirit, Amos. Well, I got to be getting on. You know, us federal employees got a tight schedule. Got to keep it. Here's yesterday's mail. <laughs> Ain't anything you can't pay next month. Hey. Hi. Uh, anything I can do to help? I suppose you want to put your feet in the cement, too, huh? <laughs> I got an idea. Why don't we let her start the ceremonies? Yeah, that's a good idea, uh, though. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me? Why, well, sure. You deserve the honor. Why, if you hadn't nagged us about that hole, we never would have got around to fixing it. <laughs> well, I, I ain't never made a speech in public before, but, <laughs> well, here goes. Ladies and gentlemen and, and Grandpa, when I throw this here gravel in this here hole, it's going to start a new way of life for us McCoys. I now christen thee the McCoy Smooth Spot. <laughs> Hi, Officer Ryan. Well, hello there, Mr. McCoy. How do you do, Officer Ryan? Well, glad to see you among the living. <laughs> well, I mean, if you was to come buzzing along here after dark chasing the speeder, and was to hit that hole there, say, before you could stop bouncing, there wouldn't be enough left of you to sweep up and bury in a snuff can. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly are a good citizen. But you well, see, I'm you glad can't... you appreciate what we're doing. Hey, come on, Luke, get off in your arches there, will you, and throw in some more gravel. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't think you understand. You see, this is a county road. And while it's very nice of you to want to well, fix it for us... Well, I don't think nothing of it. You don't put tell us how nice we are. We ain't never going to get it done. Come on, Luke. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Now, look, don't you understand? It's not up to you. It's the job of the county to fix the road. The county? That's right. It's their responsibility. We sure didn't know that. Well, you just report it to the county road supervisor, Mr. Wicker. He'll see that it's done. <laughs> you ain't a fun in this now. No, no, no. He'll fix it right away. Yeah? Yeah, probably nobody ever reported it. I declare California sure is a wonderful state, ain't it? It sure is. You know, back home in Smoky Corners, if you have a hole in the road, it's passed down from father to son. <laughs> Where I come from, to find a hole in the road, first you have to find the road. <laughs> well, you just go down and see Mr. Wicker. Yeah. He's down in room 702 in the city hall. Yeah. He'll take care of you. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks a lot, officer. It's all right. Bye. Bye, officer. Thanks a lot, officer Ryan. Well, fuck her up, Papini. What for? Suck the gas out of the cement mixer and flush it in the car. I gotta go to town. <laughs> Mr. 
Wicker? Yes. My name is Amos McCoy. I'm one of your road customers. Mr. McCoy, this is my lunch hour. Oh, well, that's all right. You go right on eating. It don't bother me any at all. I just want to tell you about a hole in our road that, that needs mending. Huh? Where is it? It's straight out of town, four and a half miles on the Foxdale Road. You won't have no trouble finding it. Just look for a pile of blowed out tires and, and, and busted axles and, and broken eggshells. Well, we'll fix it as soon as we can. Well, I don't want to hurry about it. You don't have to fix it today. You could do it tomorrow, Tuesday. <laughs> Who said Tuesday? Well, Wednesday, too, but do it in the afternoon. See, I have a little spare time. Then I can see that they're doing it right, you see. Mr. McCoy, I didn't say Wednesday, either. Well, of course, Thursday, I guess, is the shank of the week, but if it's the only time you can do it, it's the only time you can do it. Mr. McCoy, we have to schedule repair work and take it in sequence. Uh, well, would that be Friday, then? I don't know when it will be. Now, it's my lunch hour. Oh, well, I guess Saturday would be the best time anyway. You see, the kids would be home from school and they'd have the fun of watching. Boy, I have hundreds of miles of road to keep in repair. And with limited manpower, I send my road crews where the need is most vital. <laughs> you know, every time I hit that hole, it shakes my vital out. <laughs> Well, I think this interview is at an end. I have all the necessary information. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. McCoy. Yeah, well, Goodbye, well, Mr. McCoy. Wait a minute. Tell me when you want to fix the roof. I told you I can't tell you exactly when it's going to be. Well, now, wait. Don't put up on your chef up like that. You just forget about it. We fix it ourselves. It's been nice seeing you, Mr. Whitman. Just a moment, Mr. McCoy. Did you say you were going to fix that road? Sure, we got all the fixings. I must remind you, this is a county road, and no private party is allowed to tamper with it. Well, I ain't no private party. I'm a public citizen. <laughs> and I ain't tampering with it, I'm not going to fix it. Well, that road is under my jurisdiction, and I'm the only one that is allowed to fix it. Well, when are you going to do it? In due time. And do it this week. That's for me to decide. Then we'll fix it ourselves. Oh, no, you don't. We'll fix it. When? In due time. Now, don't stop that again. <laughs> Write me a thank you letter in the morning. What for? For fixing the road. You do that and I'll have you arrested for tampering with county property. I'll be there at 6 o'clock in the morning with the shovel, the gravel, and the cement. And I'll be there with the police. Mr. Wicked, I hear tell that some people come from snakes. Apparently you ain't made the change yet. <laughs> City officials. Right, Tom, what California, California, it's a wonderful state. Ask Mr. Wicker, he'll fix the road for you. Barley water. He ain't gonna fix nothing. Well, who is? I am at six o'clock in the morning. What, you mean that Mr. Wicker ain't gonna do nothing? Oh, sure he is. He's gonna arrest me. Hey, wait, now, hold on, Grandpa. Amos, you mean you're gonna fix the road and defy Mr. Wicker? You're gone down tootin' I am. Amos, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Standing up for the rights of the people. Defying the tyrannical. You're the kind of a man that made America great. Who got shot at Bunker Hill. Who caught the yellow fever, the Panama Canal. Do you mind, Charlie? We'd kind of like to talk to Grandpa alone about this. Well, look, it ain't no use. I've done made up my mind. Folks in this valley ought to know what kind of a hero we've got. Amos, from now on, you're going to get your mail on time. <laughs> Goodbye, Charlie. Yeah, bye, Charlie. Now, wait a minute. Grandpa, wait. Now, there ain't no sense in you trying to talk me out of it. I'm going to fix that hole and Wiggy can put me in jail for 50 years. Grandpa, will you stop bellering? Please, Grandpa, calm down. I am calm. All I'm trying to say is I ain't going to let no weasel faced politician tell me I can't fix a hole in front of my house. He's got my dandruff. I'll show him. But, Grandpa, if they put you in jail... Let them. Let them. If they ain't more decency and justice, I'd just won't be locked up. And I'll tell you one thing. They're going to have the squawkless jailbird they ever tossed into that god darn coop. <laughs> Any of you McCoy still awake up there? I sure could use a little help down here. But I want to go to jail, and I can't back down. I know it's short notice, but... If you could just give me a little advice between now and six o'clock, I'd, I'd be mighty grateful. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Uh, good morning, Grandpa. Good morning, Grandpa. Good morning, all. Uh, Grandpa, I was 
was wondering, are you still, uh, what I mean is it's almost six o'clock. Yeah, well, I said I was going out there and I am going out there and you can stop wondering. Oh, uh, fine, that's all I want to know. Well, Pepino, seeing as how Grandpa won't be around here anymore after six o'clock, I reckon I'll be giving the orders from now on. So would you mind spending the day mending the fences? Si, we'll do. Mending fence? You're supposed to be planting corn. Well, Senor Ramba, I know that's what you want me to do. But since you're going to be in jail, Senor Luke is the head of the McCord. Now, never mind that. Luke, when my rheumatism bothers me like it's bothered me today, this is corn planting time. <laughs> Look, Grandpa, I didn't ask to be made the head of the McCoys, but seeing as I am, uh, Pepino, when you're through with the fences, would you mind getting rid of all the gravel in the chicken yard? <laughs> Let me have gravel to digest the food. Kate, you gonna leave him ruin this farm? Well, Grandpa, since you ain't gonna be here, Luke's gotta do what he sees fit. <laughs> Luke, my girls club is meeting after school today. Can I put off milk on the cow until after supper? Well, I don't see why not. Now, hold on a minute. Hassie don't do no milking. Grandpa, I'd like to sit and jaw with you, but I gotta go out and start cutting the hay. Cutting the hay? Why, that hay ain't gonna be ready for four weeks. It's hardly out of the ground yet. Yeah, come on, please. Now, see here, God, Johnny. Sorry, Senor Grandpa. I listen only to the boss. <laughs> the boss hair is off right now, and Hassie, you can forget about that cow, because I'm going to do the milk in his orders. But, Grandpa, I thought you were going to jail today. You leave this ninny here to undo everything I've done? Well, Grandpa, what are you going to do about meeting Mr. Wicker down at the hole in the road? It's almost six o'clock. Look, running this farm right and keeping this helpless bunch out of the poor house is more important. I just got to forget the gall down hole in the road. Is that the way you want it, Grandpa? No, that ain't the way I want it, but I can't help myself. Now, go on, sit down and eat your breakfast. All of you. <laughs> Thank you. I know you'd finally come through. Come on, neighbors! Quit flashing them things in my eyes. What's all the yelling about? It's for you, Amos. We're all on your side. What in Sam Hill are you talking about? All these folks have been a victim to that hole in the road. When I told them that you were fighting their battle with Wicker, they came here to show you that they're with you. That's mighty nice of them. I called up the newspapers and told them what you were going to do. And when you flop that shovel full of gravel in that hole, we'll be taking pictures of that historic moment as they drag you off to jail. <laughs> to you for blabbing this all over town, but according to my plan, I... Did you hear that? He's grateful. We're the ones to be grateful because you're fighting our fight. Now, wait a minute. Please, everybody. Grandpa, you ain't gonna do it, are you? I said I ain't, and I ain't. And now listen to me, everybody. Listen to me. There's a lot of you folks around here that have been running off at the mouth. And on account of certain helpless people, I can't... It's six o'clock, McCoy, and I'm giving you my last warning. Stay away from this hole or suffer the consequences. Go I'm warning you, McCoy, don't you dare touch that hole. No, Senor Grandpa. Grandpa. Please, Grandpa, don't. Please, Grandpa. Senor Grandpa. You're just going to get yourself in trouble, Mr. McCoy. Trouble? Why, us McCoys in trouble has been close ten for years. We mixed it up with red coats, redskins, and revenuers. And when we want doing that, we mix it up with each other. Now I'm telling you once and for all, I ain't going to be lauded over by no pipsqueak city official. <laughs> Arrest that man. Please get down.
down off your high horse and admit you just plain lost your temper? I ain't admitting nothing of the kind. Getting arrested and having to go to court tomorrow after you promised us you was going to forget all about that old hole in the road. Oh, God, this man can just take so much. That wicker snared right in my face. And I got the sort of a face that just don't take kindly to snared. Oh, Grandpa, why don't you just go down to the judge, tell him you're sorry, admit you was wrong, and throw yourself on the mercy of the court. The mercy of the court? Sure, Grandpa, you can trust the judge to be fair. Oh, hogwash. That's like telling a sitting hen she can trust a chicken hawk. <laughs> I'm going down there and I'm going to tell them I ain't guilty. If they want to fight about it, I'll fight them. I'll take it to the Supreme Court. And if that don't do no good, I'll take it clear on up to the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> Charlie. Morning, Kate. There's your mail. It's today's. <laughs> there he is, Amos McCoy, hero of the San Fernando Valley. Oh, well, thank you, Charlie. Yeah, but Charlie, look, if it's all the same to you, would you kind of go easy on that hero of the San Fernando Valley stuff? Well, oh, it's true, Luke. Everybody's up in arms after what happened yesterday. They're saying that Amos is the most courageous man they've ever seen, and that he's another Patrick Henry. Did they say that, did they? Well, now, take it easy, Grandpa. Hey, go on. You keep going, Charlie. They're going to form the Amos McCoy Brigade. And if you're found guilty, they're going to come up here, and each man is going to throw a shovel full of gravel in that hole out there. And when all the husbands get themselves thrown in jail with you, the wives are going to march on the courthouse. <laughs> and that's what I call real friends. I'll tell you, this is real big. Amos, you're the man of the hour. Well, i got to get on with my mail. Carry on, leader. <laughs> well, leader, looks like you really started something. You're really behind me, ain't he? You proud of yourself, Grandpa? Well, can I happen to folks admire what I've done? Patrick Henry? You got a mob stirred up is what you got. Grandpa, you could get them folks into a lot of trouble if you let them go through with this. It's all wrong, Grandpa, and you know it. No good ever come of folks defying the law. When folks start taking the law into their own hands, anything can happen. It, well, now, <laughs> listen, Grandpa. You could be the cause of a riot or a revolution. No telling where it'll lead. You want that to happen, Grandpa? Other folks disobeying the law? Causing no end of trouble on account of you? Where do you think you're going? I'm going to town. What for? I got some personal business to attend to. Private personal business. <laughs> if it hadn't been for your stupidity, we wouldn't be in this mess. And look at all these letters. Every one from angry citizens complaining about the way this administration is treating McCoy. Yes, Your Honor, but somehow I have got to find McCoy innocent. Do you hear that, Wicker? Yes, Your Honor, but... Somebody's got to take the blame for this whole thing. And I know who it's got to be. You. <laughs> Me. Tomorrow in court, you're going to take full responsibility. You're going to apologize to McCoy for provoking him and for not fixing that hole in the road. You're going to admit you're to blame for the whole thing. And after that, there's only one course left for me, and that is to find McCoy innocent. Then the whole thing will be done and finished. Come in. Morning, Judge. I'm Amos McCoy. McCoy? You're McCoy? You're the one that started this tempest in a teapot? I don't know nothing about no teapot. <laughs> I come down here to get this thing settled quiet like. I come ahead of time to tell you I want to plead guilty. Guilty? Yeah, you see, I've been thinking it over. Oh, but Mr. McCoy, you can't. I, that is, uh, well, I'm sure there must be extenuating circumstances. No, I ain't seen none of them things. <laughs> All I know is a lot of my friends is fixing to get themselves in trouble on account of me. You know, I still think I got a raw deal, and, but laws is laws and they're made to protect folks. I don't want my friends and neighbors to take the law in their own hands, you see. That's very well said, Mr. McCoy, but the fact remains that, uh, well, uh, that... Uh, Mr. Wicker, you have something to say, haven't you? Haven't you, Mr. Wicker? <laughs> well, yes, Your Honor, I have. Mr. McCoy, I admit what happened out in the road was all my fault. <laughs> I, I should have fixed the road when you wanted me to, but I didn't. And there was nothing left for you to do but go out in the road and do what you did. It was all my fault. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Wicker, but 
Am I hearing you right? This boy, you weren't to blame in the least. Well, this sheds an entirely new light on the situation. Mr. McCoy, the case is dismissed. <laughs> it is. But you can't do that, Judge. You see, I done broke the law. It don't matter uh, how I done it, but you can't dismiss it. You got to do the honest thing and, and sentence me. All right, Mr. McCoy, if you insist. In view of the evidence presented, I sentence you to one day at hard labor. <laughs> hard labor? Supervising the repair of that hole in your road by Mr. Wicker's construction crew. Yeah? Wicker, first thing tomorrow, you get out there and fix that hole in the road if you have to carry a shovel and a wheelbarrow yourself. <laughs> Court's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you both. Just can't figure it. It don't make sense. There's only one of you McCoys up there shifting and underhanded enough to have wiggled me out of this mess. I want to thank you, Uncle Hezekiah. You know, when you passed on, I thought you was heading in another direction. <laughs> Feels like you snuck in the back door. <laughs> Maybe better lay low for a spell. If they hear about what you've just done, they might take a closer look at the guest book, you know. 